Good afternoon. My name is Dinah Sabelja Kennard. I'm the Director of Admission Partnerships and Programs at St. Edwards University. It's wonderful to have you with us today. Welcome to the virtual Hilltop. We have an excellent presentation planned for you about our writing and rhetoric program at St. Edwards, and we have a number of faculty members who will be presenting to you for about 20 minutes. 30 minutes, and then we'll open it up for questions. So we really appreciate your time today and um, look forward to presenting to you. A few housekeeping tips as we go forward. Um, for this webinar, we have the chat feature uh, turned off. So I would encourage you to use the Q&A tool to communicate with us. Certainly, please do contribute questions that you have about the programs and as you kind of listen to the presentation as questions come up, please enter those questions into the Q&A tool. Um, we will save the questions until the end of the formal presentation and then be happy to stay online and kind of answer any and all questions you might have about the program. So as you go through the, the and you listen to the presentation, as you think of things that you want to know more about, please do drop a question into the Q&A and know that we'll get to it at the end of the presentation. Again, we have a presentation of about 30, 20 to 30 minutes planned, and then we'll have ample time for questions at the end of the formal presentation. We have a number of our um, fantastic faculty members joining us today, as well as an alum from the program. And you can see their information on the slide along with their titles. Um, they will be presenting uh, at different points in the presentation. So I'll look forward to first turning it over to Dr. Sasha West, Associate Professor of Creative Writing, and, um, and we'll begin. Thank you for being here. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Um, we're really excited to talk with you about the Writing and Rhetoric program. I'm Sasha West. I'm an associate professor of creative writing. I mainly teach poetry. I've also taught through the Honors College and the Freshman Seminar, and I just want to introduce the degree. So if you could go to the next slide. Often when I say writing and rhetoric, I think people are picturing this. So um, people sitting in journaling or uh, using a typewriter, notice that there's no computers on the screen. And and then people picture that our graduates do one of two things. Next slide. They either um, write books and present as authors, that's Jose Antonio Vargas visiting our freshman studies class, or they teach in classrooms. And what's interesting is that we certainly do have students that go on to MFA programs in creative writing. I actually got an email from a student today who just found out she's in at the Notre Dame MFA in poetry. Um, and we certainly do have students that go out into classrooms or into programs like Teach for America. But what we know is that even in those jobs, you end up doing a lot of different kinds of writing. So if you're an author, you might also in some ways be a social media manager as you're building an audience. And even if you're working in a classroom, you might also be writing grants to support classroom projects or new initiatives. And so really what our program is designed to do is to create nimble, flexible writers. And I think you can get a really good sense of the range of what our program does by seeing the range of the places that our students end up. So on the next slide, you'll see an example of some of our internships. So you can see that we've had students intern at places like Texas Monthly and Norton, um, publishers, but also South by Southwest, National Instruments, Equal Justice Center. And on the next slide, you'll see that um, we've had a lot of writing and rhetoric students at St. Ned's end up becoming Fulbright Fellows. On the next slide, you'll see the range of careers that our students end up in, and some of them you might expect from a writing and rhetoric degree, like a grant writer or a magazine editor, but I think students that en end up going um, into technical writing, end up working as marketing managers or legislative directors, that maybe they that isn't the career path that you would think. Um, and our students work in an amazing range of places. On the next slide, you will see that our students end up at places like Apple, the Museum of Modern Art, um, Samsung, the Texas Association of Realtors. And I think that you can figure out a few things from these slides. And one is that in every field, in almost every organization, people need good writers. That while they can train you into their particular workplace culture or the particular tasks of the job, that becoming a good writer is something that takes longer and it is a valuable skill on the marketplace. I think also um, sometimes people do go straight from their internships into 
into organizations after graduation, but a lot of the 21st century marketplace is being able to pivot and grow. And I think you'll hear from um, our alum, Gavin Quinn, how we expect that our, our students will go um, many different places. And so you can look even just at these small things and know that your cohort in a writing and rhetoric degree um, is going to be filled with people that have a wide variety of interests and our degree is really designed to meet you where you are and prepare you not just for your first job out of school but for all the kinds of writer that you're going to end up being across your career and across your life and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Amy Clements to talk to us about our coursework. Thank you so much Dr. West. Uh, so yes, I'm Dr. Amy Clements. I've been teaching at St. Edward's for a decade. Uh, before that, I had a previous life uh, living in New York City, working at Random House. Uh, during the summers, I still do some projects for that industry and that uh, helps me keep my courses current. Um, so now I have the pleasure of telling you about the courses that put our students on the path to those wonderful careers that Dr. West was talking about. Um, so for starters, on the slide that you see in front of you, um, you see that the World Economic Forum, um, along with many other organizations, I'll add, um, have shown that complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, managing people, teamwork, um, those continue to be highly sought after skills among employers and the writing and rhetoric degree delivers intensive opportunities to hone those skills. And it's not just a coincidence that our degree plan does that. We very intentionally consult with our alumni to see how the workplace for writers is evolving. And we adjust our curriculum and our assignments accordingly. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in fact, in response to a study that we conducted of more than 400 of our writing and rhetoric alumni, um, we recently created the core curriculum um, that you see on this slide. Students uh, in our program can select a concentration, but no matter which concentration they choose, all writing and rhetoric majors must take all of the courses on this slide. So a student who wants to focus on journalism, for example, will still have to take a creative writing class because we know that creativity is valued in a variety of workplaces um, and vice versa. Um, students who really wanna focus on writing uh, their novels, their short fiction, um, they nonetheless have to take a course in digital journalism uh, where they learn how to apply storytelling skills uh, to a different arena. So this means that our graduates are incredibly versatile and uh, they're prepared to easily adapt to a very wide variety of options in the job market, which as you know, is under constant transformation. Uh, so no matter how passionately a student feels about a particular type of writing, um, we, we don't think that it's good for them to have tunnel vision at the undergraduate stage. Next slide, please. So one of the courses that all of the writing and rhetoric majors have to take is introduction to professional writing, which gives them a little taste of tech writing, content management, um, and the publishing process. If they choose to concentrate in professional writing, uh, then they can go on and choose from an additional array of courses that involve real world projects and are taught by professors who have frontline experience in these fields. Um, I teach the first two because I have a background in marketing. Uh, my colleague who teaches legal writing, of course, has extensive experience as an attorney and has guided many of our majors on the path to law school. Um, the grant writing class is really special. Uh, students work with local organizations in that course to produce actual grant applications. And our students have secured tens of thousands of dollars in support of an amazing variety of nonprofits through the grant writing course. Um, also, we think that it's important to train students in editing as much as in writing. So we require a course called the craft of editing in addition to a course uh, called uh, 
grammar and style. Um, and so, yes, we do teach grammar and some of us even include uh, diagramming sentences in that curriculum. Um, but in any case, we, we pair it with inspiration uh, on how to become a writer who can meet the needs of lots of different audiences and situations. So now I'll turn it back to Dr. West to tell you about our creative writing focus. Thanks, Dr. Clemens. So we might be the only, and if we're not still the only, we're one of only a few programs, writing programs across the country to require creative writing for all our majors. You already heard um, Dr. Clements talk a little bit about why. Um, and if you love creative writing, you probably are already excited that it would be part of the core. Um, if you are thinking about specializing in other areas, you might be thinking, why would we do that? So part of it is the recognition of the increasing importance of creativity. Um, I think that we have seen firsthand, even in the last year, how many fields have had to pivot in response to the pandemic. And we know that you will be going out into a, a job, um, a marketplace, a career uh, a career landscape where we are dealing with things like artificial intelligence or responses to climate change. And so it, as part of our Holy Cross mission, which embeds the courage to take risks, um, we know that that ability to be creative is vital not only to an individual across the course of their lives, but also vital to society. So um, if you think about it, if we can take just one step back, creativity requires problem solving. It requires being able to experiment and to take risks. And inside of a creative writing workshop, um, if you can go to the next slide, you'll learn to get really comfortable making something from nothing. You'll learn to take chances and make decisions to make things better. And you will have time to have practiced that before you go into your career and have to make creative leaps in your field. Um, also through peer review, which is just sort of a fancy word for workshop when writers come together and look at each other's drafts, you really hone your communication skills. You learn how to give people feedback. You learn how to take it. And we frequently hear from alumni I, um, and employers that this aspect of peer review is one of the most valuable things in the, in the workplace because they we end up producing graduates who are really good at working in teams and collaborating towards a common goal. A couple of other things happen in a creative writing class. You learn to, to trust your own growth and you learn that the first draft is not the ending place. And so I would say that this class and really all writ classes reward the idea of practice and sort of help you build resilience. And thinking back um, to our St. Edward's mission, it's just this incredible privilege to get to see the world through other people's writing and other people's perspective. And I know that there's scientific research now that's coming out that says that reading fiction builds empathy. And I think we have seen on the ground that often that early creative writing play, creative writing workshop is a place where our students really learn to encounter the world in wider, more nuanced ways. But it's also a way that they get to know each other. And so we end up um, usually graduating cohorts that are really bonded. Our writ students support and enjoy one another. And I think part of that is that so many early places, they are really learning to work together. And then the last thing that I'll say is that if you were to choose the creative writing concentration, I think two facets that are important. Um, one is you work in multiple genres. So even if you come in thinking you want to um, write a novel, you might also end up writing short plays or poems. Um, there's actually a poem that I teach that is a diagrammed sentence that uses that diagram as a form. So you get a sense of what is possible. Um, and that, that again makes you nimble and kind of helps helps you pivot as you as you go along. And then the other thing is the lit classes so that you're not just producing your own writing, but you're also seeing what are what have some of the most interesting celebrated writers, both contemporary and classical, done in that space. And to talk about the next sort of core of our core curriculum, I'm going to turn it over to Professor Tim Braun. Thank you. Uh, my name is Timothy Braun. I'm the visiting assistant uh, professor of creative writing. Um, I've been at the university for 13 years and have taught a whole bunch of different really fun classes. I primarily teach playwriting and screenwriting, but I also teach freshman seminar and some kind of funky honors classes. But for today, I want to talk with you just a little bit about our journalism program. Uh, I have also written for the New York Times and the Huffington Post, and I've been on NPR. 
But uh, what makes our journalism program, I think, so neat and interesting uh, is that it's not just a journalism program. It's journalism with digital media production and design. Now, there's a lot of things you cover as far as journalism is concerned. Uh, with these classes, you're looking at uh, media literacy, uh, journalistic practice, how to interview people. I have to admit, I, I, I struggle with sometimes, but it all comes down to a civic understanding and engagement. And this comes back to the, um, uh, the core of what St. Edwards University is all about, moral reasoning and ethics. From this, our journalism students uh, move on to do things like uh, look at privacy, data ownership, um, and also they learn how to do things like uh, create uh, visualizations from that data, shoot and edit videos. And I think that's really cool. And also telling compelling stories with podcasts. We have a, a wonderful place to do podcasts on campus, which is where I am today. I'm coming to you from Soren Hall. Uh, where uh, You can probably see in the background a whole bunch of fun, interesting things. This is well what the campus kind of looks like, if you will. Uh, but we've covered the core curriculum. And uh, what I want to get to is, well, I would call the core curriculum like the cake, if you will. Uh, what also I think is kind of fascinating about um, St. Edwards University is, uh, next slide, please. Uh, well, all, uh, how uh, versatile we all are, or how versatile the program is. Uh, you can see that with um, uh, journalism, uh, we've got sports journalism and arts and entertainment and magazine writing. You become the most well-rounded uh, journalist that uh, you can possibly think of. Uh, but uh, next slide, please. How writing students get there. I'm going to talk with you just a little bit about co-curriculars. Now, as I was talking about earlier, uh, is that the core curriculum is sort of like cake, if you will. In my opinion, our co-curriculars are like the icing. We have several journals and clubs. Uh, we have also a tremendous visiting writers program, the Marsha Kinsey writing program. And I was wondering, uh, Dr. West, you run this. Could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Sure. I would love to, um, because it was one of the things that made me really excited about teaching at St. Ed's. We are one of the few schools of our size that can bring um, a really the kind of caliber of writer that we bring. Um, if you go to the next slide, you'll see just a few of the flyers from um, recent years. And so, for instance, in 2019, poet Jericho Brown came into my Poetry 2 classroom. He talked to my 14 students about how to avoid writer's block and how to put a book together and about a new form that he'd invented called the duplex. And a few months later, he won the Pulitzer Prize. And earlier this year, he was on the short list for um, inaugural poet. And so um, we, it, it's an amazing thing to be able to bring these award-winning writers to campus, but also to bring them into classrooms. And we've done a really good job of getting writers who sometimes are crossing genres in the same way that students are. So our next reader this year is Antonio Ruiz Camacho, who started in journalism and then moved into fiction. So um, there's just all of these places across the program where our students get unique access to working with actual professionals and they get some sort of um, inside insight to what, what may lay ahead for them. I, I'll turn it back to you, Tim, to talk about journals. All right. Uh, well, one of our journals is called Arte, and it's uh, take its name from a Greek word of virtue and excellence. Arte is where students from just about any major can, can uh, submit academic research for publication. Uh, but uh, also, this annual journal uh, is produced through the partnership between our writing students and our visual studies majors. And so we work a lot with other departments. It's not just us sitting here reading and writing. And what well, we work with uh, pretty closely with our visual studies majors. Majors. Next slide, please. Another one of our journals is the Soren Oak. Now, I introduced earlier that I'm in Soren Hall, right next to me, right behind my bookcase, if you will. If I had a big window, you would see a huge oak tree. It's a 300-year-old oak tree that the founders of St. Edwards University used to sit under to meditate and think about life and all these kinds of things. Well, the Soren Oak Review, uh, I think this is a really neat journal. Um, I have been published by the Soren Oak Review 13 years ago when I first got to the university. Uh, the Soren Oak Review publishes creative writing and, once again, visual arts from our St. Edward's 
community. I want to emphasize community, not just students or alum, but people who are associated with the university as a whole. I, I think that's pretty cool, personally. And writing students and visual students, uh, they major in editing uh, and design and all parts of journal reviewing. What they do is, well, they're training to be professional publishers when you look at the Soren Oak review. I Again, I think it's a really, really great uh, review that we have. Next slide, please. We also have two key things. I, again, I think this is the icing on the cake of our program, is that we have official co-curriculars and we have unofficial co-curriculars. And today I'm going to talk a little more about the officials first. Uh, we have uh, Sigma Tau Delta. Uh, it's an English club, an honor society. We also have the Gold Top View. That's our student newspaper that's published once a week. With uh, Sigma Tau Delta, that promotes literary awareness across communities and the nation as a whole. They host writing workshops, readings, and they even have a game night. I have it on good authority that a lot of them are really into Dungeons and Dragons right now. So I don't know. I, I personally think that's a really, really neat thing that we do here. Uh, but the other one that I want to talk with you about as far as our official co-curriculars are concerned uh, is Hilltop Views. It's, as I said, a weekly student newspaper. This was founded back in 1888, and it's gone through a couple of transformations, but its current uh, format, if you will, uh, started on February 16th, 1987, and it covers what's happening in the world today, what's happening on our campus, what's happening in Austin and Texas, and many of our alumni who have come well, out of Hilltop, and anybody can write for Hilltop Views, uh, some of those people have gone on to write for the New York Times, work with uh, NPR, uh, one of our uh, alumni, uh, he immediately got a job with the Dallas Morning News, and now he is the communication uh, chief of communication and policy for the mayor of Dallas. And so you can see some of the experiences you get. It's not just things like writing and journalism and all these kinds of things. You can also branch out into other ways of communicating as well. Next slide, please. Now, this is the really fun stuff. This is the stuff that... I am really involved in, I love this stuff. We have unofficial publications and clubs. And I wanna bring this to your attention because if you see something lacking, uh, at least in your life on, on campus, you, you, you wanna have something that we don't have yet. You can work with professors and other uh, students to, well, dig up what you want to do, what you want to, uh, whatever you're interested in. These unofficial publications are things like New Literati. Uh, it's one of our two major journals on campus, of course. It features poems and stories, and uh, just about any student can submit work. But we have other organizations as well. Uh, Behooved is our uh, comedy uh, magazine that was founded in 2013. Uh, and what we found out was is that some students just wanted to write some humor and there was no outlet for it. And so a couple of students came to me and they said, hey, can we start doing this? I said, yeah, go ahead. Let's let's see what happens. Another thing we also do is a playwriting salon. Gavin has been a part of in the past. And then we go out. And this was, of course, before COVID-19. But we would go out and see plays. And then we talk to the cast afterward, usually get pizza. Uh, my wife got to know all my students that way and all those kinds of fun things. And then I want to emphasize that we also uh, go from department to department, not just, let's say, the art department or the visual department, so the visual uh, 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 program that I mentioned earlier, uh, but we also work closely with the theater program. Uh, Transient Theater Troupe was founded in 2007, uh, and what they often do are short plays that are written, well, in my playwriting classes. In fact, usually they come knocking on my door right behind me and saying, hey, uh, can we have some plays that we want to produce on our own terms? These are the kinds of things that I think make St. Edwards University really special. It's why I keep coming back after 13 years. I just, I cannot begin to stress enough that uh, I don't think I've ever once worked a day in my life at this university because it's just too much fun I and mean, there's too many great things going on. Next slide, please. And writing students get their uh, in, 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 intention career preparation. Uh, Dr. Clements, could you talk about that? I'd be happy to talk about that. Thank you very much. You talked a lot about cake. Uh, and so I'll talk about what I consider to be uh, the secret sauce 
of our program. Uh, all of these experiences that you've just heard about culminate uh, in a couple of programs that, that I manage. Um, first of all, uh, we require all of our writing and rhetoric majors to complete an internship for a course grade. Uh, so the organizations that um, Dr. West talked about earlier, uh, ranging from South by Southwest to Texas Monthly to uh, Latinitas to National Instruments, um, for those internships, uh, the students do also have faculty supervision and, uh, and I, I assign a course grade for those. Um, but seniors also have to take a career preparation course, which is much more than a session on creating resumes. Um, that's a semester devoted to translating all of their St. Edward's experiences into a meaningful new chapter after graduation. We cover personal branding, entrepreneurship, uh, crafting an impressive online presence, um, unexpected sectors that routinely recruit writers and editors, uh, but more importantly, um, for students to truly find their place in the world. And we also introduce them in that course to our amazing network um, of uh, RIT graduates and alums. Uh, next slide, please. So you'll see where those two uh, programs that I just talked about fit into the overall um, core curriculum. So yes, as part of the career preparation class, uh, we invite our alums back um, to serve as mentors, um, but sometimes they also even uh, hire our students. Sometimes the alums become the employers um, and they wanna come back and recruit directly from our classes. Um, that happened uh, just a couple of semesters ago um, when one of our alums visited career preparation. She happened to have a job opening. It was December. We happened to have a December graduate sitting in the classroom who was a great fit for that position. And uh, that student was uh, working for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce uh, within a month of her December graduation, thanks to one of our alums. Um, so speaking of our alumni, uh, we're about to hear from one of those outstanding graduates, uh, Gavin Quinn. So um, start thinking about some questions that you would like to ask us, uh, because after we hear from Gavin, we're going to move to the Q&A portion of, of the event, and um, we'll use the Q&A button for that. So think about what you'd like to ask, and, and that's the uh, tool that you'll use to ask the questions. Next slide, please. So it is my pleasure to introduce a 2019 alumnus who has achieved so much in such a short time. So Gavin will talk about his current position uh, at the Texas Book Festival. He'll talk about how he made it there from the hilltop. Um, so, Gavin, welcome back and uh, welcome to the virtual hilltop. Thank you, Dr. Clements. It's so great to be here. Um, yeah, so I am currently the Programs and Financial Coordinator for the Texas Book Festival. And I think you might immediately be thinking, finance, that's not a word I've heard yet in this presentation. And it's not a word I thought I would ever see on my resume ever uh, since I studied writing. But I think one thing that I'd echo that's already been said often throughout this presentation is that writing is about flexibility and adaptability and creative problem solving. And initially my role at the Texas Book Festival was just programs assistant, helping out in different odds and ends of our programming, like reading rock stars, where we bring authors into Title I schools, um, development, which is grant writing and things like that. Um, but I saw gaps in our needs of our organization and I just need to fulfill them. So hence the finance, which is not as bad and not as boring as you might suspect it to be. It's actually quite exciting. And it also frees up more mental bandwidth for creative writing uh, in my own free time. But usually um, one, one thing I enjoy most about my job at Texas Book Festival is that my days are really varied. I'm a person who gets bored with one task very quickly. Um, I do the Pomodoro technique where I have 25 minutes on one task and then I like five minute break before I jump into another one. Um, but my, my days are really varied. So one day I might be cutting checks for finance. The next day I might be editing a video. 
for a book club we have coming up and then I might be editing a podcast the next day. And then just today, we also had Reading Rockstars where I was chaperoning around authors to different virtual schools and things. Um, so because every day feels like a completely different adventure, it's really opened up my professional skill set, and it's also um, really broadened my horizons of what I thought was possible with my degree. And I can actually carve a direct pathway to my current position for my SU courses. I took grant writing with Professor Beth Ekman, and we were allowed to choose whatever nonprofit we wanted to work with. And I chose Texas Book Festival because I helped, wanted to help expand the Reading Rockstars program. And I checked back sometime after graduation with the Texas Book Festival, and I asked, hey, did this grant win any money? And they said, no, but we do have a position that's opening. We think you'd be a great fit. And I applied for the position and I didn't get it, but they made a new position for me anyways, where I could still work with a book fest because they liked me basically, which was great. And really um, like was a great way for me to grow my professional skills. Um, I can also point to other classes that really helped me and still continue to help me every day in my position. Um, one thing I wrote down, which is funny that Sasha was here because I didn't expect her to be here, um, is poetry workshops. I think that is something that is absolutely essential to my daily work because it has become so valuable to me to have an ironed down um, and resilient creative process as I've gone into the professional workplace. And I don't write poems every day for work, unfortunately, which is sad, but I do edit videos a lot. I do make podcasts and I do have to have the full suite of digital production skills, which also goes hand in hand with the digital media production and design, which is another essential course because writers should know not just how to write, but how to create, which is something that writing majors is all about, the creative process of creating anything and getting a problem and thinking and realizing maybe writing isn't the best answer for this, like writing something, but I can instead make a video for it or I can chop together a podcast, et cetera, et cetera. Other things that helped me included internships I did with the Austin Film Festival and another uh, nonprofit, Badger Dog, uh, also literary, helping out with creative writing camps for students in the Austin area. And shortly after I graduated, I had a job with GoDaddy um, and I was a social media specialist. And that's where I really um, sharpened my graphic design skills, which was another major boon for me as I joined Texas Book Festival because they needed a new graphic designer and motion designer. And I grew that skill set at my first job and was able to take that into my new workspace. But yeah, I'm also happy to answer, answer any other questions you might have about life at SEU because I was the poetry editor for the Sora Oak Review and playwriting salons, which I was happy to attend all the time. And yeah. That was so inspiring as always, Gavin. Um, it's wonderful to, uh, to see you again. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to our audience. Uh, well, uh, this concludes uh, that part of our presentation. Uh, we're ready to talk with you now. We're ready to answer questions. Um, so just use the Q&A button for that. And we also have contact information if you'd like to follow up with um, the chair of our department, uh, Mary Rist. Her email address is listed there. Um, as well as uh, how to connect with our admissions office for follow-up questions. And I'll certainly add, I know that um, for all of us, if, if you've kept track of our names, um, we're also happy to talk uh, with anyone who's interested in the program one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, as well. Thank you, Professor Clements, and thanks to all of you for uh, the wonderful information about the program. I hope that our audience um, understands just how comprehensive and, um, and, and rich the program is, both in terms of the academic piece, but also the co-curricular piece. And it's no surprise that we have such wonderful faculty members kind of creating that space for our students and also just so many wonderful students uh, that it's produced as evidenced by Gavin. Um, so I invite in our audience to suggest uh, to drop in any questions in the Q and A, as you mentioned, Professor Clements, that they might have for any of our uh, presenters today. Um, so I will go ahead and um, invite them to do so now. Um, I did want to ask a question as we are um, waiting for questions from our audience to uh, just kind of revisit the component about the um, internship requirement for writing students. So I know a lot of students are very interested, prospective students are interested in doing internships and that's something that they will um, 
be able to do um, here at St. Edwards if they are a writing major, certainly if they are majoring in other areas or many internship opportunities. But can you talk a little bit about just how students in the writing program go about finding internship opportunities? I know that often prospective students are kind of curious about that process. What does it look like? How do students find out about internships? And are the internships typically local in the Austin area? Obviously, our campus is in the epicenter of, of one of the best economies and, and most diverse economies in the country. So lots of opportunities just at our footstep here. But certainly, I know that we have students who intern uh, at places kind of throughout the country. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about just how students find those internship opportunities um, and where they might, might be? Yeah, that's a great question. And of course, um, by definition, uh, according to the Department of Labor even, um, an intern is defined as someone who is learning. Uh, it, it's not meant to be a person who's uh, replacing an employee, but it, it's a student, it's someone who's learning. And so as part of the learning process, applying for internships is also sometimes um, a process that gives students with skills of, as you say, how do we find the internships? That's great training for after they've graduated, how do we find a job? Um, so we facilitate the search um, through a number of ways. Um, we maintain an online group that uh, we encourage students to join while they're students. And then after they've graduated, they're still a member of the group. So we often get a lot of uh, internship opportunities that way. People who've already been through the program and now they're reaching back into um, our online group in order to recruit. Um, and we also um, help students use um, a platform that we have uh, called Hilltop Careers, uh, which is where employers who know St. Edwards, love St. Edwards, understand what we're all about, um, will post their opportunities. And sometimes those are opportunities that aren't being posted anywhere else. Um, but in any case, it's a tool that um, is limited just to St. Edward's students that they can sign up for um, to find out about internships that are available. Um, and then just because we have um, an individual person, that's me, uh, someone who's sort of designated to manage the program, um, local folks through the grapevine um, find me and, and every week I, I hear from people we haven't yet worked with, um, for-profit employers in the tech sector, uh, nonprofits, highly creative fields, you name it. Um, and we're able to, to vet the opportunity um, and, and share it that way. And there are, we also want students to know how to use traditional um, means such as LinkedIn, which does actually have internship postings and in, indeed is a good one for our field. Um, we've seen that uh, one of the, wonderful, um, one of the good shifts uh, from remote learning and remote working uh, has been that some employers that weren't so comfortable about doing remote internships, say out of state, um, are much more comfortable with that now. You know, they've given it a try and they understand that it works for our field, for people who are doing writing, editing, video work. Um, that can be done remotely, easily. Uh, so a lot of opportunities have opened up over the past year that we previously wouldn't have been able to take advantage of. Thank you for sharing that. Dr. West, did you have something to add? I just wanted to add that um, I'm always amazed at how many connections my colleagues have in the area. I mean, I think all of us in the writing department have been in Austin for a long time, and we maintain sort of radiating connections out in our field. You know, Tim knows so many people in the theater profession. Amy knows so many people in publishing. Um, Jenna Heath, our journalism professor, has been published in so many places. And so um, what's nice about the range of expertise is that it's also, there's there's all of this amazing infrastructure that Amy talked about, but there's also a way for a student to just say, hey, I'm really interested, like I remember Gavin came into my office and said, I'm really interested in finding ways to use writing to serve the larger community. And so we started talking about, you know, what organizations might be a good fit for you. Um, and the Texas Book Festival was on that list and Badger Dog was on that list. Um, and so there's just, you know, because Sinez is so small, we can also just do this intense mentoring 
mentoring um, as students figure out across their career uh, across their career at St. Ed's where they want to go. Um, yeah, we're just really able to support them, which is nice. I think that's a great segue to kind of just talking about the rich history of writing and, and writers and, and poets in the city of Austin, right? I mean, Austin has certainly grown in terms of population size as a city over the last couple of decades, but for many decades has had a tradition of, of fantastic uh, and, and, you know, compelling um, kind of writers and thinkers and um, journalists and poets in the city. So really kind of just tossing this out there for anyone who wants to respond, but just talk a little bit about how the culture of Austin is particularly um, well poised to be an incubator for students who are interested in writing um, to study and, and really to be nurtured in that. I always like to ask alums who have stayed in Austin um, that question. So I don't know, Gavin, if uh, you're up for, for answering that, but do you feel like talking a little bit maybe about why you, you stayed in Austin? Um, you know, graduation is a time when some students are like, okay, this is my moment. I'm, I'm going to try a new city. Um, but, but you've stayed in the area. I, do you feel like talking a little bit about why? Sure. Yeah. I think, I mean, I was under the creative writing concentration and I think Austin is a wonderfully literary and artistic city to its core, like still to this day. There are, it's just a wealth of opportunities for artistic development if you're interested in playwriting in particular because there's so many great theater troops in this area. Um, there's like great bookstores that host a lot of fantastic readings. And there's also St. Edward's Marsha Kinsey Visiting Writer Series, which is consistently excellent. Um, but Malvern Books hosts a lot of great readings as well. So does Book People. There is just so many opportunities if you want to learn more about the craft of writing. This writer, writer speak of text is also in this area. Um, so there's opportunities like that for developing your craft and also being in community with other writers, which is essential if you want to be someone who is workshopping often and you want to further develop your craft. So I'd say Austin's just a really nice hotbed of creative writers and people who are um, like-minded in their pursuit of furthering their craft. Thank you. Tim, during the, the presentation you mentioned um, about the podcast, um, resource on campus for students who want to uh, develop a podcast and, and work on podcasting. Can you talk a little bit more about that and um, maybe give some examples of, of projects that students have done um, recently? Uh, recently, uh, just because of COVID-19 for the past year, uh, when when I say recently, probably push it back about a year or two, um, but uh, we have uh, classes in our journalism program that do focus on, uh, it's wonderful podcasting equipment, I think it's top notch, and uh, we have a studio for it. And uh, that's something that we've been developing more and more uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, but uh, the, the, the head of our journalism program is very uh, sincere about you being as multifaceted as you uh, exit uh, the, the hilltop to make sure that you can find that job and what you want to do. And she's a firm believer that podcasting is part of it. Uh, and we've done a little bit of podcasting that you can find uh, on the website. Uh, and uh, in, the, uh, in, in the process, I know that uh, we're, we, uh, at least Jenna, uh, who was mentioned earlier, she's also talked heavily about doing uh, more advanced uh, things as, as far as our podcasting capabilities are concerned. Uh, and hopefully, uh, if we have students you know, on, on campus, uh, we'll be able to ramp up uh, those things a little more. Gavin, I'd love to ask you, as, as someone who works with prospective students in the admission office, they're often, you know, kind of at this point in the year, in the spring of their senior year, they've, they've received a number of acceptances to a number of universities, and they're trying to weigh their decision and think about, gosh, you know, which, which university do I choose um, to enroll at? Uh, I'm sure members of our audience right now are probably you know, grappling with that same question. Can you talk a little bit about why you chose St. Edwards when you were a high school senior and you'd been accepted and decided to enroll? And, um, and maybe what was it that, that, that compelled you to, to join us here at St. Edwards on the Hilltop? Um, can you speak a little bit more to that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's 
the magic factor of visiting St. Edwards on campus that everyone describes as they're part of their decision, that, um, that there's a certain warmth to the campus. Um, but beyond that too, I think there's a certain factor of the St. Ed's community at large, like not just the writing community, being so close knit, um, where it feels like every day you're seeing um, familiar faces that is really attract was really attractive to me as a prospective student, um, but also the opportunity to get to know my professors and my colleagues, I say colleagues, but my like cohort, like my uh, fellow students on a really intimate and personal level, which is only gonna to lead to more academic growth for you because you're going to have more workshopping opportunities, uh, friends for one, two, <laughs> but also better connections um, for, if your professors know you better, they can better recommend internships for you or career paths for you and help you grow. So I think just how close knit the St. Ed's community was and continues to be was one of the most attractive things to me. And also just being in Austin and where St. Ed's is situated in Austin, which is right in the heart. Um, so yeah, so those really all major pluses for me. Gavin, what you're describing uh, makes me think of why I love teaching at St. Edwards. Um, I've taught at two other amazing universities, but uh, St. Edwards is different in the fact that from the time the student is a freshman in our writing program until the time when they graduate and even after they've graduated, um, you know, our, our whole writing faculty gets, gets to know them. It's not a situation where someone's in my class for a semester and then I never see them again. That was it. They just kind of vanish out into the world. And every semester I'm starting with a brand new group of students, you know, that I, I don't really know anything about. We haven't really connected. I don't know what their goals are. Um, I don't know much about their needs. It's, it's not like that. You know, by the time we get to sophomore, junior, senior, you know, um, we, we've been able to build an understanding of, of what our students need. And, and we get to learn from the students as well, because we're just, we're collaborating at the same time that we're teaching. So I, I just liked what you said, and it made me think about uh, how much I enjoy being part of this group, especially um, over the, the past year. Um, we've just taken such good care of each other. It's, uh, as you say, a close-knit group, but not at all um, an, an aloof group uh, or a group that's hard to somehow get into. It's, uh, it's a group that really takes care of each other. Yeah, and I would also say too, something that I admired as a prospective student and something I've come to appreciate even more as a student and now an alum, like alumni, um, was St. Edward's commitment to civic engagement. Um, it's easy as a student coming in, not, I shouldn't say easy, because it's hard to choose a major, um, but it, it's easy to think, I want to go to this college, or I want to study this thing, but I think what St. Edward's presses is why, why study these things? Why do they matter in my larger course of life? Why do you want to go to college? What do you think you will gain from this experience beyond getting a degree? Which is something that a liberal arts school like St. Edward's equips its students so well for, is the uh, well-roundedness of being not just an alumni, but a person. Yeah, I, I, I really want to second what Dr. Clement said, but also some stuff that Gavin has brought up is that we really need to get to know the students. I've taught at a larger university, uh, which was a nice place, but it's nothing like this, of where I've got to get to know my students. And so I can uh, hone my, um, my comments to the students themselves, uh, not just blanket, you know, try this or do that or whatever. I need to understand where is Gavin coming from, uh, from, you know, working on his screenplay or something like that. But as uh, last year, as COVID-19 put us into lockdown, uh, some uh, one of Gavin's uh, former classmates approached me, said, will you write a letter for another one of the classmates because they couldn't do uh, some service learning in Canada. And yeah, my, I wrote the guy a letter. Uh, Gavin, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, and I ultimately, uh, we turned it into a podcast for Texas Standard. Um, uh, lots of bad Scott Pilgrim jokes. I promised my wife I would make no jokes today. Um, and I'm, I'm doing my best. By the way, she picked out my shirt. I, 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 my, she, she's the best. I, I, Gavin, I want you to know this, that Ilsa picked this shirt out. I had no idea I had this shirt. 
you know her. I mean, it's, I just, I usually wear hoodies and stuff like that. So it's a good shirt. Yeah. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So. It's a good shirt, Tim. And I think after this last year of COVID, we, we've all forgotten that we have certain shirts and items of clothing in our closets as we've been more and more relegated to working at home. Um, well, wonderful. Well, before we close, I just wanna invite in our audience to submit any remaining questions that they might have. And so this is an opportunity to ask uh, an alum, a former student, current faculty members, anything that you might wanna know about the program, as well as if you have questions about the admission process or anything related to admission, I'm happy to answer as well. Um, as we're waiting for any final questions to come in, I do wanna pose this kind of uh, last question to our faculty members. Um, how do you, how do students typically, when they come into St. Edwards as a potential writing major, how do they figure out which area of writing is correct for them or, or the path they want to pursue, right? So how do they determine, I want to do creative writing, I want to do journalism, I want to um, focus on, on business writing. Um, how do they kind of discern that? What's the process look like for them as they go through kind of exploring the curriculum and writing and then ultimately kind of finding um, an area of concentration? I, th I think the um, part of how we redesigned the major was really to help students with that, because the, the first few classes that you take, the intro to professional writing, the intro to creative writing, the digital media, you're getting to try out many different spaces. And I also think sometimes students come in with preconceived ideas about what those spaces will be, what journalism is, or what professional writing is. Um, and then when they actually are engaged in, in um, the interesting problems that are being brought up and the case studies, they start to see something different. And so the major is really designed for students to find themselves inside of it. And also um, to recognize that writers often are more than one, um, have more than one interest or have more than one skill set. And so it's not something where you have to know immediately. I mean, some people definitely do, um, but we, we have, there's, there's wiggle room. Thank you, Dr. West. All right, well, before we close, I just want to take a moment to thank our presenters today on the faculty side. Thank you so much. And you can see their information on the screen in front of you. So if you have any questions for uh, specific presenters today or for Dr. Mary Rist, uh, chair of the department, please do find their information uh, at St. Edwards University on the directory or um, by looking at the writing program online through the website and finding their contact information. I'm sure they would be happy to hear from you if you wanted to reach out. Many thanks to Gavin for um, being available today to talk to you and share uh, your words of um, wisdom and experience, Gavin, and, and share insight into what you're doing now. You certainly make us very proud here at St. Edwards University, so it's wonderful to have you with us today. And to all of our students who are watching today or watching this in the future, um, I just wanna say that uh, we're thinking about you. We know this has been a really difficult time to go through a college search, whether you're a high school senior currently in uh, 2020, 2021, or you are perhaps a rising high school senior or going to be starting a college search in the future. We know that this has been really challenging because of the pandemic and the fact that um, most of us are feeling much more isolated and disconnected from our support. Uh, network and especially from, from school officials who may be uh, kind of supporting your college search. So please do see us as a resource at St. Edwards and in the admission office specifically to help you um, through this process and through this challenging time. A college search can be overwhelming under normal circumstances and certainly much more so um, while we are in this ongoing pandemic. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us in the admission office if you have questions about anything we can get you connected to the person who can answer them if we can't answer them for you ourselves. Um, I certainly want to congratulate everyone who is listening today on their acceptance. If you are a senior who's been accepted to the university, congratulations. Um, we are certainly thrilled at the idea of having you join us here on the Hilltop in person in the fall of 2021. Um, and we certainly, uh, again, appreciate your time today. And thank you so much for your interest in the writing program at St. Edwards University. We'll look forward to hearing from you in the future. Wish you well. In the meantime, be safe, uh, check in on your friends and your family members, and just know that we're here for you and we look forward to connecting with you. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate your time.